Good morning, everybody. This is my Rika deck profile. My name is Gandor Gaming, and uh, welcome to another beautiful Monday morning. And I bring you guys my Rika Pure deck profile today. Uh, Rika is a really cool plant deck that came out at the worst time, to be honest. It came out in the same set with uh, two other really stellar archetypes, uh, Eldridge and Adam Antipaters. And Rika was definitely the run of the litter. For a while, Rika was just a really cool plant engine you played in Sun Avalon. And uh, that was about it. Uh, Rika was themselves pure, was kind of always a iffy deck. But now, because of the new support that came out in Power of the Elements, this deck has legs. And I would definitely say it's definitely a tier 2 contender. If not, r just barely not tier 1 contender. This deck has some very, very powerful cards. And the new support is absolutely broken. So I can't wait to get into that. But uh, first things first, like and subscribe. And let's get into it. First things first, we play three uh, Snowdrop Dorica Fairy. Now this card is an amazing card. And uh, other builds of this deck, I would say it's like a one of. But uh, in my current build, it's still a three of. This card is amazing. Basically what this card does is you can tribute a plant monster you control. Special summon this card and then special summon a plant monster from your hand. A then, once returned, you can make all monsters on your field become the level of the plant, market, uh, plant monster you target, which includes itself. So basically, it's a free rank 8, which is really, really strong. It's also another plant extender, and this deck loves the tribute cards. I would say this deck is the layer of darkness of plant monsters, especially since their new support is literally layer, layer of darkness 2.0 for plants. And uh, ultimately, yeah, this card is amazing. Uh, next, we play uh, Mudan. The um, Rika Fairy. We play three Mudan. Uh, Mudan's a really, really strong card. Basically, it has the effect where, like the uh, like the uh, Sunflower over here, you can tribute one plant monster, special summon this card from your hand. If you normal summon or special summon by a card effect of a plant monster, which, by the way, is Sunshine, so is a special summon off Sunshine, you can add one Rika Spell and Trap for your deck to your hand. Can only use this effect once per turn. So that's really important because by adding your spells and traps, you can really get the deck rolling. As you notice, you have the tribute cards, but don't worry, we do have the most adorable tributes. And I can't wait to get into them. Uh, next, we play one uh, Hellborn the Rika Fairy, which is one of. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. I see some people cut it to one or just ba or not play it entirely, but I think it's still a good one of. Basically, what this card does is that uh, it has a couple effects. It has a lot of effects, to be honest. But uh, its first effect is that if your opponent activates a monster effect that targets a monster you control, quick effect, you, uh, they call it, that's Rika, quick effect, you can tribute this card from your hand or field to get the activation. If this card is in your graveyard, you can tribute one plant monster, special summon a defense position, but banish it during the end phase when it leaves the field. Uh, what's important about this guy is that not only does it special summon itself from the graveyard, but the, the fact that uh, it also can just quick effect negate something is really, really strong. I think it's still a good one of, and uh, yeah. Uh, the, for the last of our big Rikas, we'd also play Rika, uh, what's it called? Erica the Rika Fairy. Now, most people actually cut Erica, and I think she's still a good one of uh, for this build. Basically, what she does is that. When an attack is declared involving a player monster you control, you can tribute this card and or in the hand or face up on the field, of course. That monster you control gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of the turn. If a player monster you control is tributed while well, this card is in the graveyard, is that during the damage step? You can special with this card in defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. So these two are just extenders from grave and they have different effects. So, like I said, you negate from hand and you give a bonus battle attack, which is really, really interesting. And that is it for our big Rikas. Now we'll go into the small Rikas, which is a little worse, but we'll get into them right now. Uh, first things first, we play two uh, Pluma Rika. Uh, she's really, really good. Uh, if you control a tributed, uh, if this monster you control is tributed, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand in the fence position. So it's basically saying, hey, you tributed a plant, this card's in hand, free special summon this card onto the field, which is really, really good. And then you can target up to two player monsters in you control and increase their levels by two until the end of the turn. Which is really, really good because you can increase your sixes 
over here into eight, which is nice. And uh, you can only use this once per turn. It's also a level four, which is important because we do play an XYZ that is a level four. That is really, really good. Uh, next, we play two Rika. Uh, I gotta remember this. Uh, Claim, uh, Claimin, the Rika Fairy. Um, horrible with names, my apologies. And she basically does a couple of things. Uh, as a level four, you can tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field. Uh, then target two plant monsters you control, reduce their levels by two till the end of the turn. During the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard because it was tributed, and sit there this turn, expose to summon it, but banish it during when it leaves the field. It only uses this effect once per turn. So, she's the opposite of a pen, a Plumer here, or Primal, uh, where she basically reduces levels, which helps it go into your rank sixes and your rank fours, which is really, really cool. And then finally, we get to the main Rika themselves. So all these ones, you kind of know, these are the main princesses. Now, this is the one that's the heart and soul, Rika Petal. Rika Petal is amazing, an amazing card. This is the new support card that came out in the new support. And so it makes this card amazing. So these are our six crucial cards in this deck that make the whole deck work. Uh, Rika Petal basically says, hey... Uh, during the main phase, you can take one Rika monster from your deck, accept Rika Petal, either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard, which is amazing. As you can see, one, two, three, four, four of these monsters float in grave, which is amazing. It also has the effect where either uh, for the rest of the turn, you can slot in the plants. During the end phase, while this card's in your graveyard, if you control no monsters or all plants, or all monsters you control plants, special summon this card. Basically, it's just, it's Lone Fire. It's, uh, oh, not Lone Fire. What's the, uh, what's that beautiful monster called? It's Spore. Uh, not Spore. I forgot they used to play it in a Monarch format. It's like Treeborn Frog. There you go. It's like Treeborn Frog. So it just returns, and it just gives you free Tribute Fodder every turn. Not to mention, it has that effect that either adds or sends a Rika monster, which is really, really amazing. As for the new support, Rika Princess, which is a gr all dressed up version of Rika Petal, Basically, she has a couple effects. Uh, during the main phase, you can special summon this card from your hand. And basically what it does is that uh, uh, while you, it's in the face of monster goal, you can't special summon monsters except plant monsters. And if your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a Rika monster, shuffle this card into your hand or graveyard into the deck, tribute one plant monster, negate the activation. It only uses effect once a return. So it basically gives you Nibiru Bay. Uh, it gives you a free negate activation allowing you to play through hand traps it's just really really strong uh it's really synergizes with pedal because pedal can just send this card to grave they try to interact with your board you just negate it with princess and it's just a really really strong card uh for our last plant monster and last monster in general we play three lone fire blossom because lone fire is lone fire and gets you into any of the plants you need at that time and that will be it for the monster lineup let me put this all nice together real quick to show you what they all look like. And uh, yeah, that is it for the monster lineup. Now let's go into the spells now and traps. Now it's time for our spells and traps. And first things first, we have Rika Konon. Uh, Konkon? Konkon, I think it's called. Now this is a new card that came out in Power of the Elements. And this card is stupid. Basically what it does is that during every turn, once per turn, every during every turn, you can just set a... Rika trap card from your deck, which is amazing because Rika has some really powerful traps. It does lock you into plant monsters, but that doesn't worry about it. And also has the effect where if you would tribute a plant monster for uh, for an effect, you can tribute a monster your opponent controls instead. This card is Layer Darkness on Crack. It basically sets a trap and allows you to do uh, tribute your opponent's monsters for effects. It's really, really good. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what this card does. Um, you can only do it once per turn, like Layer Darkness, but who cares? You tributed one of the most powerful monsters for an effect. That's amazing. Tributes cost. If you, anyone knows Layer Darkness, because you tribute a monster that they control, they can't negate it. Let's say they had, like, a Toad on field. You tribute that Toad as cost, which is amazing. This card literally just allows you to tribute their cards every turn. It allows you to set traps every turn. A really, really strong. Right, so what this card does is that you can tribute uh, one plant monster to add one Rika monster from your deck to your hand, and if you tribute a monster when this card was activated, 
add one plant monster with the same original level as that Rico monster, but different names when you deck your hand. That's why we played multiple levels of the sixes, eights, and fours, just so we can trigger off this card. Uh, this card is an amazing extender. Basically, you tribute one to draw two, and if you have this on field, you tribute your opponent's monster to draw to add two, which is really really stupid. Uh, next, we play one Rika Flurries. Uh, this card's really really cool. Basically, what it does is if you're a monster, you control. It's tributed, except during the damage step, to make your opponent tribute one monster they control their choice. So this card, as a continuous card with the field spell, basically gives you two tributes a turn, which is nuts. You're just tributing your whole board away every turn. It's ridiculous. And once per turn during your opponent's end phase, if you control this fa a no face up card, destroy this card. But you're always going to control a plant monster unless you're losing the duel. But uh, this card is amazing. The field spell is amazing. You'll be tributing your cards left, right, and center. Uh, next is a personal tech choice of mine. Rose Bell of Revelation. Now, this card is an amazing card. I don't see it in anyone's list, and I think that's crazy to me. Uh, basically, what this card is, is add a monster with 2,400 or more attack from your deck to your hand. Banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon one plant monster with 2,400 or more attack from your hand. Normally, use this effect of... Uh, Rose Bell Revelation once per turn, which is stupid. It's unless you add any of your big guys to your hand, and uh, just really, really good effect in Grave. It's just a really, really strong card. Another personal choice that I play is Moray of Greed. Now, the reason why we play Moray of Greed is that a lot of our monsters are water. I think most of them are. So, if you have a water you don't want to actually have in hand, you can just use this card, shuffle it back in deck, and then draw three. Which is really, really nice. And it's just a really, really strong card. And it does, it is ash bait, so. Uh, well, it's not good ash bait, but it definitely does eat ash. And uh, that's why we played the call by for it. Uh, we really don't want this card to be in the game because we're just negging ourselves three. And that's not good. But that is it for these spells and traps. Oh, I said wrong. The spells. Now it's time to go into right, the traps. So for our traps, we played three poisoning or poison or pollen sin. Basically, it's a counter trap that basically says, hey, your opponent activated a card effect. Uh, a spell a trap while you control a plant monster. And you contribute what plant monster to get the activation, you do destroy it. So this is basically our solemn judgment on legs. They start a special summon a monster, they activate a monster effect, they activate a spell and trap, negate and destroy it. All you gotta do is tribute a plant. It's just a really, really strong card. And if you tribute a Rika card, then you're just getting icing on the cape because it just recurs. Uh, next, we play two Rika Sheet. Rika Sheet is one of the trap cards we can set off the field spell. And basically, what this card does is you can target one monster your opponent controls. Also, you can tribute one plant monster. Players can't activate the face up monster effects on the field this turn. Then you can tribute one monster, then activate and take control of that monster until the end of the turn. This card is amazing. With our field spell, not only are we tributing a monster they control, but then we're negating and stealing a monster. It's really, really stupid. And it's a really, really strong card. I almost want to bump this up to three. But I think two is fine. Um, next, we also play for our last two cards. is Rika Tranquility. Now, this card is really, really good. Basically, when your opponent activates... Uh, when this card is activated, you can tribute one plant monster. Special on one Rika from your graveyard in defense position. Then, if you tribute a monster, it's activated this turn. Special on one plant monster from your graveyard in defense position. It only uses this effect once per turn. So it's a kind of a reborn effect. I almost want to play three Sheet, one Tranquility, and then three Poisonous. Because these cards are nuts. Uh, I like Tranquility because it gets you some engine back from your grave without having to banish or tribute plants. But because of our field spell, it doesn't hurt us anyway. This is just a really, really strong, strong card. And now let's go into the first things deck. first we play two teardrop of Rika Cream. Now this card is an amazing card for Rika. This card's always been kind of expensive, and now because of the new support, it's even more expensive. This card basically says, hey, it's made out of two level eight monsters. Uh, if you control this card and quick and it have plants as materials, you can do it as a quick effect, tribute a monster your opponent controls. This card gains 200 attack for every tribute monster that did that turn. Which is really, really strong. Uh, basically, it's just another way to tribute more mock cards. As you can see, we can tribute like three times on our opponent's turn. And we have all three of those. The field spell, this girl, and 
the uh, continuous card. Uh, this it gets really had to crazy. They can't really deal with tributes. It's just a really really strong boss monster, and the reason why she deserves that price range. I didn't mention this by the way, but most of the Rikas are beautiful by the way. When it comes to card art, these artwork are amazing. I never understood when people are like made waifus out of cards, but the Rika cards, god damn, they're just pretty as hell. And uh, they're just really, really beautiful cards in artwork. Uh, next we play two Zamshi Rika Queen. This card is never really made, but it has a decent effect. Basically, it's two level six monsters, and if a monster is tributed except during the damage step, you could detach from this card, target one monster in the graveyard, it's better summon it, but negate its effects. Also, it becomes a plant monster. If a plant monster you control would be destroyed by battle card effect, you could tribute one plant monster you control on your hand or field instead. It basically gives you a protection effect, and also basically steals a monster from your opponent's grave, makes it a plant monster. It's, it's, it's pretty good against back row decks. It's also good against, oh, not backward decks, I said it wrong, graveyard decks. Going against tier element, they try to use a tier element effect. They use its effect to uh, take the monster. But I don't believe it's a quick effect, sadly. If it was, it'd be a lot more interactive and a lot more good. But as a normal basic effect, it's fine. Uh, next, we play two Rika Steam, uh, Stina, I believe is her name. Uh, she's our rank four. She's our last of our XYZs. Basically, her effect is that we detach one material from this card. Target one plant monster or Rika card in your grave, add to hand. If this card's XYZ summon is tributed, you can spend summon one rank 5 or higher plant monster from your extra deck or graveyard. Then attach this card as material. You can only use this effect once per turn. So that's really, really strong. It's another way to go into your higher level Rikas without dedicating so much cost. Because you just go into your level 4s, then you just use your effect to go into a teardrop, which is nuts. Uh, next, you go into one. Uh, Bangalancer. Bangalancer is an amazing Link 4. It's a little costly in this deck. We barely ever make it. But in more uh, generic plant decks, you definitely do. Uh, basically, this card says that it needs two plant monsters. But basically what it does is that during the main phase, quick effect, target one effect monster your opponent controls. Um, and basically what it does is that once it targets it, uh, take damage equal to its attack. And if you take the damage, uh, turn it to the hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish two or more Link monsters from your grave whose levels equal exactly four. Special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. It's basically our version of the Ancient Warrior, um, the Ancient Warrior Link that bounces cards. It's a really, really strong card, but in this deck, they're attributing so many of their cards. It doesn't really come up. Uh, next we play is two Sylvan uh, Danceable. This card's amazing. Uh, it's another card that came out last set. Uh, basically, it's Sylvan support, but when this card is Link Summon, you can choose a number from 1 to 3, excavate the many cards from the top of your deck, and if you do, special summon up to as many, um, uh, two excavated plant monsters that can't be used as Link material. Also, send the remaining cards to Grave. You can target one plant monster in your graveyard that has a level or levels of the monsters you card as points to, and become that level till the end of the turn. Well, use this effect once per turn. This card is stupid. The fact that you can just spend some in two plants by uh, milling them or excavating them is amazing. Not to mention the fact that it can t modulate levels, help you go into rank 8s, rank 6s, or rank 4s. It's just really something important. Uh, next, for our last of our links, well, actually, we play a lot of links, but our Rose, um, a Rosemary Stairs being Jasmine. Now, this card is the poster boy when it comes to all plant monsters this card is amazing uh requires two plant monsters and basically if your life points are higher than your opponents this card and any plant monster that points who can't be destroyed by battle contribute one monster you could discard points to and spend some one plant monster from your deck in defense this uh, defense position you only use the effect of jasmine once per turn it's once per copy by the way so you make more you can do it again and then once per turn, you can gain life points. Uh, if you gain life points, add a plant monster from your deck to your hand. This card is a really, really strong monster. And if the field spells up, you're tributing your opponent's cards. It's really, really good. Uh, last of our plant links, we play one Sun Avalon Dryas. That's one level four lower plant monster. This card is Link Summon in the extra monster zone. Except using uh, uh, the Sun Genius Locust. 
Uh, you can add one Sunvine Spell Trap every deck to hand. We'll use the fact once a turn. Uh, it basically, the only part that matters on this card is that you can gain life points by using it as a material, which helps trigger off Jasmine. Uh, it's a decent card. It's a one of. It helps you link climb. That's the only reason why we play it. We never go into dry ass. And then finally, we play Cerberus, Phoenix, and Unicorn because they're just generic links that help us break boards. And that is it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't do anything stupid. And see you all in the next one. <laughs>